Good evening, everybody. January 8, 2018, welcome to spring in Westfield. It's great out there. Jeremy Lawler, our clock is not right. It is now 7.01 p.m. <laughs> Heck with the snow removal, the clock's not right. I don't know what you're thinking, so. Uh, Mayor, also, the invocation is given, going to be given by Steve Pettigo. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure on your agenda, but he is with Eagle Creek Evangelical He's with the Eagle French Creek Church. Church. So Our western I to suburbs. That. Thank you. Great to have him here. Thanks, Jim. So, Pledge of Allegiance, if you'll join me, and we'll uh, have a prayer led by Steve Pettigo of the Eagle Creek Friends Church. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Excuse the publication. We have so many friends church in town, we don't, we can't keep you all straight. You're unique. We used to have many more. <laughs> Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we're gathered here today, we pray for your presence in a special way. And as we face a new year, we ask that you would be present at each and every meeting throughout the year. We humble ourselves and commit ourselves to your service, and we surrender ourselves to your purpose. Bless each councilman and official here today, the mayor, and all who are here making the decisions today. Guide us in your direction. <coughs> we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Pastor, thank you so thank much. Thank you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, they're all here. Oh, here. Mr. Yes, it's your meeting, sir. Thank you. Will the clerk know the uh, presence of a quorum, please? Here, present. Uh, here. <laughs> here. 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 All right. Thank you very much. Um, we do have some administrative uh, business tonight, and that includes the election of a new council president. At this time, I would open nominations for council. I would move that we retain Jim Ake as council president for 2018. I would second. Okay. We have a motion by Bob Horke and a second by uh, Mark Keene. Will we close nominations? And we have a movement, uh, um, <laughs> a motion to close nomination. Is there a second? Second. second. Okay, seconded. Nominations are closed, and I would call for a vo vo uh, voice vote. Uh, all those in favor of uh, my continuing as president of the council, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Hearing none, I have, uh, I am still president of the council. Thank you very much for your confidence. I appreciate everybody's support. Yeah. Done. All right. Um, at this time, I also have the privilege of selecting a new vice president and appointing him to uh, the next year. And I would like to appoint uh, uh, Mr. Chuck Lehman has my vice president to uh, move forward also. Mr. Um, Mr. Lehman, would you accept that? I position? will. All right. Thank you. Uh, the other thing I would, we retain our, uh, the plan commission. We have Bob Horke and we have Steve Hoover representing city council at this body. And uh, I think they've done an admirable job and would suggest we retain them in that position. Is there any comments? Well, it just seems, I, I believe they're appointed to those positions unless they don't want to be, be in that position. So it's certainly if they wish to uh, withdraw, that would be the thing. Otherwise, they should continue on and hopefully, hopefully they don't say anything about withdrawing. All right, thank you, thank you. All right, oh, I thought this was an annual thing that we do and every year I do my plea that I'd like to serve. So I just want to make sure I get that in this year. Okay, all right. Just so it's noted that you guys, okay. that I asked. All right, fair enough. All right. 
Um, the position uh, of, of council representatives is a standing position, and I would ask that, uh, Mr. Horke, do you wish to continue? Very interested and willing, absolutely, yes. All right, thank you. Mr. Hoover? Yes, I'll continue. All right, thank you. All right, there are no changes to the agenda as printed, so we'll move on to approval of the minutes. Uh, I'd entertain a motion. I wasn't there, but I'll move to adopt the minutes of the council meeting of December 27th into the record. Thank you. I'll second that. And I have a motion by Bob Horke and a second by Mr. Steve Hoover. Uh, all those, uh, is there any discussion? Any additions or corrections? Hearing none, uh, signify by saying aye if you approve of the minutes as stated December 27th. Aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The minutes are approved. Thank you. We also have to approve claims tonight. Uh, I'd entertain a motion. Move to approve claims. I have a motion by Mark Keene. And is there a second, please? Second. Second by Joe Edwards. Or Bob Horke. Or Bob, Bob, Horke. Bob Horke. Okay. Bob Horke. Thank you. Uh, is there any additions or corrections to the claims or questions? Hearing none, I would ask that you signify by saying you approve the claims as stated. Aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. Hearing none, the claims pass 7 0. All right, it gives me a distinct pleasure to introduce formally one of our planners and. Uh, it's nice to have Jennifer Miller with us again tonight. She is uh, still president of the HAND organization. And uh, so welcome for a Thank special you. presentation tonight. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, for the record, my name is Jennifer Miller. I'm the executive director at HAND. HAND is a housing and neighborhood development organization that is based on Noblesville. We work to provide housing options and build a community in Hamilton County. I'm going to get my slides set up here for you. Over the last 15 years, HAND has invested over $17 million in Hamilton County. We have built three new single-family homes. We've developed six, operate, or excuse me, six apartment communities with 96 affordable units. 82 are for seniors age 55 and older, and 14 are non-age restricted. We still operate all of those communities. We've also provided down payment assistance to 15 new homeowners. And these numbers are very important because one in five Hamilton County homeowners and twice as many renters spend more than 30% of their income on housing. Um, when households exceed that threshold, it means that those households have less uh, income available for other basics. And we're talking things like education, transportation, health care and food so all the things that would help that household break out of the cycle of poverty they can't if they are spending more than 30 percent of their income. the area median income for hamilton county is approximately eighty five thousand dollars and according to the housing needs assessment that was completed in 2013 by hand 25 percent of hamilton county's population makes 60 percent or less of that HAND has a project under construction now uh, in Home Place. It's generally located between 106th and College. It includes 10 units. Two of those units are detached for families, and eight include duplex units, which, which will be dedicated to seniors age 55 and older. We have several different funding mechanisms that we use to construct our developments. In combination, we use a, a combination of public and private grants, as well as permanent financing to develop our communities. And then depending on the scope of the project, we will also pursue low-income housing tax credits. Low-income housing tax credits are a mean of, means of incentivizing affordable housing. Investors purchased credits, which in turn generates revenue to fund construction, while at the same time reducing the investor's tax liability. And I should mention that these are tax groups, not individuals that are participating in that program. 
In accepting funds, HAND commits to providing affordable housing for a minimum of 15 years. We utilize the offset our construction costs, allowing us to set rents at below market rates that are more affordable to low and moderate income households. So that begs the question, who actually lives in affordable housing? Typically, it's residents earning 60% of the Hamilton County's area median income. If you recall, I mentioned that's approximately 85,000. So for a single person household, that's $29,400. And for a two person household, that's $33,600. And for reference, according to your salary ordinance, your building inspectors start out at $27,500. We also see a uh, number of older adults living in a fixed income situation. Uh, we have entry level professionals who are just starting out in their careers and so they have limited earning power. And we see a lot of service workers. A lot of the workers that are coming to the businesses that you're attracting to Grand Park, the, the employees that are, operating the, that are operating those businesses. HAND is unique in that we own and operate all of our affordable uh, communities. We, um, the rents that are always reinvested in each development for maintenance and improvements. Units are constructed with universal design elements to make them more accessible. This includes things like wider doorways and zero thresholds to make it easier for wheelchairs and walkers and others, other uh, devices to help uh, our senior population uh, with accessibility. HAND also uses energy efficient building materials and Energy Star appliances to help our tenants keep their utility costs down. Again, it's important to us to keep their household costs below that 30% threshold. We try to help them as much as we can, not only with rent, but with their utility costs. Residents in our developments must have income and they must pass extensive background checks. Our developments are small, we visit them regularly, and we make sure that they're well maintained and we work to minimize any issues, not only with our residents, but between residents. Uh, we do contract with a property management company that helps us with the day-to-day -day management. They are on site to each of our developments weekly and hand staff is at each of our developments monthly. So there are frequent visits to ensure that uh, the developments stay in good condition. HAND also raises additional funds for its home repair program to help seniors age in place. In the last two years, we've, or excuse me, in the last three years, we have completed 17 repair projects, totaling over $412,000, excuse me. Funding for those projects was provided by the Community Development Authority, the Federal Home Loan Bank of Indianapolis, the Central Indiana Community Foundation, including the Legacy Fund, the Sheridan Fund, and the Senior Fund and Lake City Bank, and we are always grateful for all the contributions that we receive from those organizations. If you would like more information um, on hand, please visit our website, drop me a line, and I think all of you probably still have my cell phone number, so you can reach me there. Um, I do want to share with you, we have a fundraiser coming up. It is a trivia night on January 26th, 7 p.m. at the Noblesville Event Center, which is located right on State Road 32 near 37. You can register for that at our website by clicking on the events page. And at this time, I know you have a very full agenda, but I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Well, thank you, Jennifer. Thank you. We appreciate you coming out tonight. Are there any questions about AND and what they do in the county? All right. Jennifer, thank you. Doing your thing. Thank you, I appreciate that. Have a good evening. Thank you. At this time, uh, we'll move into some old business. We'll take a look at Ordinance 1744, the GPEC planned unit development. It was introduced to council November 13th, and it's been through the APC process. Consideration to not Skelton presenting. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this item is been before you since uh, this is uh, I'm standing in for Amanda Rubadu this evening um, she is uh, she's provided me with some notes and I'm happy to spend as much time on this as you like but there's really been two substantive changes since you last saw this um, one is that uh, lot five uh, now defaults to the uh, the normal architectural standards of the UDO um, it's not exactly certain what's going to locate on lot five yet and until 
uh, that's known, it will default until to the default uh, architectural standards. And then secondly, um, there were some uh, signage changes. This is the uh, sign standards have been modified to uh, require the same kind of signage that is on uh, the new sign there for Grand Park uh, Event Center. And with that, I'm happy to respond to any questions you may have. This, uh, this does come before you. It's ready for adoption. It comes to, to you with a unanimous favorable recommendation from the Plan Commission. Thank you, Matt. Are there any questions for staff? All right. Hearing none, I never, this is up for adoption. I entertain a motion. Move, uh, move for approval. Okay. Mr. Mark Second. And I have a second from Steve Hoover. Any discussion? I'd just like to make a comment. Um, I've struggled with this one because the use is something that we very much want. Uh, it, at Graham Park. I know that people have put a lot of time and effort into this. I still have some pretty vast concerns with the level of architecture or what I feel is lack thereof in building materials. And while I have those concerns, I understand that we kind of are dealing with an interesting situation with it being uh, part of GPEC for the most part. I don't want to see this reproduced across Graham Park. And so I just want to have that on record that I don't feel like these standards are something that I want to see reproduced. I don't, I don't think it's doing long-term justice for our park. All right, thank you, Cindy. Any other comments? And I think that's uh, the reason that we specified that Lot 5 would fall back on other standards, because that would be separate from and likely a smaller building. So. I, I would agree with you that we don't want this the area up there, this type of architecture. And the comments. Okay. Uh, would the clerk please call the roll? Yes. 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 All right. Thank you. The next item under old business is ordinance 1746 Westchester PD. It was uh, introduced to council back in November 13, and it went through the APC process and hearing, and a recommendation came to us. Uh, it was a negative recommendation, and it's up for adoption consideration tonight. Um, Kevin Todd is presenting for the city and staff. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Good evening. For the record, Kevin Todd with the Economic Development Department. The item before you this evening is a new planning unit development um, project called the Westchester PUD. The project is approximately 309 acres in size, which in it includes the existing Woodwind Golf Course property as well as acreage south of 156th Street. All of it is east of Town Road. As mentioned, this item was introduced at your city council meeting on November the 13th, 2017. It received a public hearing at the Advisory Plan Commission on December the 4th. Since that time, um, the petitioner has made several modifications to the proposed ordinance, which are highlighted in the staff report that is attached to your agenda. You may also have noticed that there's additional commitments by the petitioner, which have also been included with your packet this evening. Uh, the petitioner, will, I believe, will be available um, to address those in a moment. This item comes to the council, as mentioned, with a 6-3 negative recommendation from the Advisory Plan Commission. This item is, however, eligible this evening for adoption consideration. Um, at this time, the petitioner's representative, Mr. John Dabashewitz, is here and would like to say a few words following some available for any questions you have of staff. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, for the record, good evening. My name is John Dabashewitz. I'm a land use professional with the law firm in Nelson and Frankenberger. Uh, we're here this evening on behalf of Platinum Properties, who is the applicant. Paul Rio, on behalf of the applicant, is here. 
and Matt Cohote of Woodwind Golf Club LLC is also present along with Rick Lawrence, an attorney with our office. As staff indicated, the proposed development includes uh, three zoning districts. Single family homes are proposed in area A, which is that area uh, for council members. Area A again is the area south of and adjacent to 156th Street, east of Town Road and north of 151st Street. Area B, which is the area of homes surrounded by the golf course here and the homes identified on the north side of 161st Street, that is area B. And area C, which includes the existing golf course. As staff indicated, significant revisions have been made regarding home architecture, uh, as well as in area A. Uh, revisions have been made to the land plan to have homes face the perimeter streets with homes required to be side low garages, as well as masonry requirements for those particular homes. The overall density of the development has been reduced uh, and proposed to be capped at 340 homes or 1.1 homes per acre. Uh, increases have also been made to the square footages of homes in area A and area B. Uh, commitments were offered up as part of the plan commission review regarding a future option if desired on the part of the city to purchase area C uh, and an agreement, uh, likewise an agreement for the use of the swimming pool as part of the Bent Creek facility was also offered at the time of the plan commission. Uh, since the uh, plan commission meeting and as included on the information posted for consideration by council, uh, amendments have been made to that set of commitments, uh, allowing the township to also have an opportunity for an options, option to purchase area C. In addition, home builder requirements uh, and the petitioner working with the adjacent buffer owners uh, on the exact treatment of those areas has been uh, included. Uh, and I'd like to pass out now uh, two additional items that came up this afternoon and we were asked to consider. The two additional items that we were asked to consider and the petitioners agreed to add to the commitments if acceptable to the council include the following. Uh, this text uh, is in reference to the three areas of development. <coughs> that would be south of 156th Street, that's all, including all of area A. And then there's two sections of area B, the section north of 161st Street here and the section south of 161st Street located here. And we will specify that no single builder shall build homes on more than 50% of the lots in any one section, the sections I just additionally, there should be a minimum of three builders of homes within the Westchester PUD. Builders shall be randomly interspersed throughout the sections as noted. So there'll be a minimum of three builders in area A, a minimum of three builders here in area, this section of area B, and likewise with the area north of 161st Street. Uh, that was a request that was made this afternoon. We've reviewed it with staff. Uh, it's found in good order. And uh, as I indicated, the petitioner uh, would ask for consideration this evening by the council subject to that written commitment being added to the set of commitments currently in front of you for consideration. The last and final item that we've agreed to add uh, is the following, that the predominant exterior building material on the front elevation of the home shall be carried around at a varying percentage on the remaining sides of the home, this percentage will be determined by the individual builder. Um, that was a recommended uh, addition that was made to us this afternoon. We've agreed to add that to the written commitments. Uh, with that, we'll conclude. We'd be glad to address questions the council may have uh, and would respect the adoption consideration subject to the commitments as amended. Thank you, John. Does council have any comments or questions for the petitioner. Thank you, Joe. <clears throat> At what public meeting were these requests and recommendations made? And who made them? The requests were made as part of a meeting between the petitioner, uh, council members, and members of the public. Council members when? Uh, there was a meeting that was held uh, on Saturday. Was that an open meeting? Uh, an open meeting regarding what? regarding just what I ask you. The, that meeting was not an advertised public hearing and, and my understanding it wasn't required to be an advertised public meeting. This is not the way we ought to do business. 
the, the petitioner was asked to consider additional items uh, and it shouldn't be a situation where a petitioner should be discouraged from making additional commitment counsel that have been requested. But it should be done in the light of day. Can I interject here, Joe, and yes, give you, you some may. background? I'd be happy to. There was much discussion going back and forth about this project. You have stakeholders out there in the southwest quadrant that this was very vital and crucial to how they how they uh, perceived their lifestyle, how the golf course inter interrelated to their community, and it was felt that um, uh, people were not, they were sort of talking past each other. And so I had some conversations with residents out there. I had some conversations with, uh, of, of, uh, with the builder. And it was thought that it would be a good idea to contact the residents out there and have some conversation. Which time I contacted some key people that had been involved with the Conservancy and uh, asked them to invite some people to a meeting to just discuss general concept. And uh, starting with the premise that the golf course was a value to the community and it would be worth saving if we could say, say, find a way that was acceptable to the residents of the southwest corner. They invited uh, several people from the community, and then myself and Chuck Lehman were there, along with the builder, uh, Bill, and the golf course operator, uh, um, uh, Matt Cohote. And it was an open discussion, and everybody could answer any questions and uh, get, their, get their questions asked and answered in a roundtable format and no conclusions were, were made. Um, and uh, there was a, a consensus of agreement with certain factors and that spawned further conversation throughout the weekend and that spawned some, some um, um, requests back to the petitioner by residents of that quadrant. And uh, uh, those were considered by the petitioner. And uh, then the reports came back to uh, that group. And uh, we've, um, we've just tried to reach out to everybody and give everybody a say. So it, in that respect, it was very open and they, they it was not controlled by the city, it was controlled by the residents out there. Does that answer your question? Well, it, partially, but this should not be, you know, let's make a deal and outside of the public view. I mean, that's, that's what public business is for, pure and simple. If you can do this, why well, you can do about anything. You didn't ask me what I thought about it might be a fine thing I don't know but this is the first I've seen of it and I'd like to have some time to cogitate on it if I might but you do what you want because it looks like it's already going to go that way to me any other comments I, I just want to ask a question of Matt Skelton the uh, the changes and everything that have been proposed my first reaction was this is the kind of thing that needs to go back to the APC, but I've since some meetings and conversations have been told that this is really part of a development agreement, not part of the PUD. D, is, it, is that correct that it does not have to go back to APC? Well, actually, I'll let your legal count. That's a kind of a legal it's question good. for your legal counsel. I okay. No, no, it's not required to go back. The, uh, keep in mind the basic function of zoning is to restrict land use. But that's not the only way you can restrict the land use. Uh, you can do it through the legislative process, such as a rezone, and a rezone is before you right now. There can be also restrictions on property unilaterally by the property owner, and that's what, <coughs> what these commitments are, in essence, doing. These aren't just commitments, a promise by a developer to do something. They're in a form, in a way, they're in a form that is to be recorded if the legislative part of the rezone is adopted. Once that's recorded, those restrictions will go on the property as well. So the property can only be used by looking at both the zoning, if you consider that tonight, as well as the unilateral restrictions they place on the property. They could have done that as part of the rezone at the beginning 
and make it all part of the rezone and the legislative act you're considering tonight. But it's not necessary to have it that way. It's not necessary, but it might be proper. That's opinion. Yes. Well, I, I still don't like it. I think it kind of smells, but that's just my opinion. It may be a good, a good thing, but I come here with no understanding, no prior warning of what's going to happen, and I think it ought, these things ought to be done in public. The plan commission turned this down for a reason, and that was a public meeting. Now the public doesn't have any chance to say what they think about it. They may like it fine, I don't know, but I have some, su some suspicions about it. Joe, the commitments were emailed to you as soon as they were uh, um, when I didn't get went it. through there this afternoon. The, um, as soon as they were looked over by our attorney and the planning department. I'll take a little different approach. Um, I still had some sizable concerns with the architectural standards used. I know that you say that they were, um, they far exceed what we, on our UDO for SF4, but that is so minimal it, it's negligible. Um, that there's been increases in, in things that I think are great. There's other things that I think are really too minimal for what they are, like using the collector street on the periphery uh, for the side and rear facades. Um, you know, the better standard there is using the seven point, and instead this goes to the five point. You know, it's things like that all through the design standards that make me believe that it's not the highest quality it could be. So that's where I'm at. Explain seven point, five point. We have a list in the UDO and based on the rear and side facades that are facing the street. Um, the collector needs five points in these architectural elements. Um, it's kind of complicated. You'd have to look in the UDO to, to know them all, but they get to choose from a list. I understand. I want to clarify this for the public. Right, and if you're on a primary arterial, then you would have to choose seven from the list, so meaning a higher standard, things like that. and they opted for lower okay. standards. If, if I might, Mr. Ake, the, that, that, that provision that we've committed to would be applicable to all homes that are facing the golf course or a common area within Area B. So those standards aren't even applicable. We wanted to use a standard that the, the city was accustomed to understanding so that we weren't creating something new. We said, hey, these, this is okay for, how, for, for the public who would be driving by uh, and see the rear side of a home along a roadway. We'll apply that same standard, although we're not required to, to all homes within Area B that are adjacent to the <coughs> area or Area C. So if you're on the golf course, you has, have as an attractive view as what's expected uh, if a development were to have a rear or side of a home facing uh, the public street where numerous cars come by a day. Any other comments? Yeah, Mr. President, I have a couple. Um, this didn't start just last week. It started, you know, months, years ago. Uh, but last week after the uh, APC meeting, um, I was one of the proactive ones that reached out and uh, still trying to look for a solution because I believed at that time and still believe at, that, at, at this time that no matter what happens out there, it's, something's going to happen. I mean, it's just not over. So by, uh, by what happened last week or weeks before or months ago, it's still not over. So I reached out to be proactive to see if there were solutions out there. Now, if somebody wants to criticize me, not you have at it. But I work every day proactively to promote this city, and I'm going to continue to do that. And if you or anybody wants to look at, at that as you know, working behind somebody's back, that's what they can do. But we're out there listening, asking questions, uh, responding. Uh, you're welcome to ask several people. Uh, I received phone calls. I received uh, emails and texts. I responded to those. Uh, people asked for, for input. I gave it to them. Uh, most of this was, I would consider it 
uh, somewhat spontaneous, but it was based on the fact that people still were looking for solutions. Uh, I think what we've done over the last uh, week is just a continuation of what's been done over the, over the last few years. And I think what, we've, uh, what we're looking at here today is, a, is an extremely reasonable solution to a complex uh, matter. It impacts a lot of people, a big area, been through it. I can go over all the details with you. Uh, but any one of us, any one of us counselors, any one of the APC, anybody associated, a, a neighbor, anybody, can pick up the phone and call anybody anytime and, and state their opinion, state you know, their idea, let it be known. Uh, nobody's doing anything behind any, anybody's back. It's all out in the open. If you have an idea, call me, call Jim, call anybody, call Cindy, I don't care, call anybody. Uh, so we're, we're, we're out there uh, just trying to do what's best. And uh, when you get good people together, talking about good solutions, good things can happen, really what happened. And uh, I'm not gonna decline talking to somebody when they, are, when, when they have good uh, intentions. So that's kind of where we're at. Uh, I think what, what was discussed, what we're looking at here tonight, is an extremely reasonable con con uh, conclusion to a, what has become a pretty complex uh, matter. I support it, uh, I commend, I really thank a lot of people that put in so many, so many, so many hours, uh, didn't give up. Um, you know, I'm sure that, you know, not everybody's gonna be satisfied, but that in itself may be a good thing, I don't know. Uh, I still believe it's in the best interest of our city and uh, I support it. The importance of reaching agreement on this, I think has just been getting heavier and heavier as all of this has played out. I, for one, elect council leadership to lead. And I view what had happened was, in effect, a leadership role to try to bring the parties that needed to discuss this together for things that have not been decided. That's why we are all here tonight. The information came together in the, the fastest way it could under pretty stressful circumstances, but uh, there's nothing that necessarily binds anybody to a particular feeling of how to proceed with this tonight. But uh, I understand how we got to where we are and I'm comfortable with the fact that our elected council leaders took the burden of leadership that they're obligated to do and this is the result of it. That all sounds very good, but we need to do our business in public pure and simple. That way you won't make mistakes and everybody will know where everybody stands. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Well, Joe, it was totally in public. You can, you can look at it any way you want, but when a resident, when a constituent calls and asks for a question or asks if they want to meet, am I supposed to say, no, I can't do that? I didn't, that's not what we're talking about. We're that's talking exactly about, what we're talking about, we're talking Joe. About that's exactly what we're talking about. Public commitments, Joe, on can, a project. Can I, but I, I've already spoken all I'm going to speak about it. Right. I just don't think we ought to. Part of our job is to, to make it a public process and meet with the constituents. The constituents in the Southwest had a vested interest in what happens. Did you invite me? We, why didn't you start the process? You, why didn't you reach out to the <laughs> people? You had but it, well, it see, it's not your city, district. It affects I'm at the large. city of Westfield. Thank you. I have the floor. Yes, it is do. my district, okay? So I started the conversation, okay? If you want to start conversations, have at it any day. Go out and promote the city. Go out and do whatever. You're welcome to do that. Okay. Right. I mean, I, I have to say I do agree with Joe. Well, I appreciate council leadership taking action on this, I'll tell you one thing is a counselor making a decision today and still trying to understand stuff at, what time is it? When a vote is expected and I'm just getting new information, I don't like it. I don't like that at all. I like to digest. I like to really be able to think about this. So I don't, that's what bothers me is the, this 11th hour stuff. <laughs> 
I understand where you come. sometimes it takes leadership to move things forward and reach an agreement. And that's what we tried to do in the best interest of our constituents. I'm at large, Cindy, and so are you. You, uh, Anybody could step out and have me. We had a meeting the other day, you and I. So was that something that would come under scrutiny with the, with the constituent in the South uh, Ditch Road? This happens. It's part of governing and governing well. We need to know what's in the thoughts and minds of our people, and we need to help the process, help them understand, and help reach conclusions that are good for the city. And that makes sense. This group, but sent, around, document, this group sent around a video that talked about placemaking and how important that was. I'm sure you saw that. Yes. I did too. And that's sort of inspirational. But what I'm talking about is the actual legal document that I have to send my name to. Okay. And that's what I want in advance, just saying. Sometimes things happen in a time frame that, that is, um, just takes its course. We've been looking at this for a long time. So I appreciate everybody's input and I appreciate your comments tonight. I mean, the, the last proposal was criticized because it took so long. It went, it took a different process. It went back and forth, back and forth. It drug out for nine months. That was heavily criticized by many people because it took so long. This was an attempt to, I mean, this process from the beginning, the developer said from the start, this was not going to drag out, that this was going to make a proposal, make changes, and present that to the council for consideration. And we either buy it or we don't. And we got a recommendation from the APC, which was negative, the way things stood at that point. So there were some additional changes that were worked on to bring before the council tonight. This is a public meeting tonight. There's nothing, we're not doing anything behind anybody's back. And I know from past experience, you can't do everything in a public meeting. I mean, there are discussions outside of the public that get a, a process to get a product to the point where you can vote on it. You, if, if we did everything here, we would never do anything because you can't have the round table discussion that was had this weekend. And that's what made the progress. So there is no perfect way to do it, but I'm perfectly satisfied with the way this came out as are many others and we had the documents before us. There's been two things added to further improve the project. And I don't, I mean, we've done that many times. At APC level, making a recommendation and at council level. As long as it's adopted as part of the documentation, it doesn't make any difference when we got it. All right, any other comments? I'd entertain a motion. I'll make an attempt. Uh, I'll make a motion to adopt Ordinance 17 46 to include the uh, commitments concerning the development of the real estate that were. Uh, that will be attached and also the two provisions that were added most recently uh, within the last few hours that were presented by the uh, presented by the developers representative this evening all right is there a second second i have a motion before us and a second and i'd just like to say here is part of the discussion that for the first time we have a remonstrance that supports this project by the citizens of that area and that makes that shows that we're headed in the right direction and I appreciate those out there from the southwest that support this project and there's been some positive emails and uh, and recognition that this brings certainty to the course 
it survive the course survives it, it gives them certainty of what is going to happen there it brings certainty that the course will not close and it brings certain guarantees which we heard before that the course would not be in perpetuity that, that, that it can go on has green space of course it gives us a lot of assurances that weren't there before the other thing that it does and I don't know how many of you have read the documents but for the record there is an advisory commission uh, uh, there's a vice it calls for an advisory group with a township uh, appointee a city council appointee uh, and uh, uh, not a city council a township appointee plus um, uh, a resident of that area plus the builder so the residents would have say over this if a builder were to change or go out you have the opportunity to interview and have say if one of the three departs there's also a custom builder added to this and i just wanted to add that to discussion so there are many many benefits uh, to the residents and the the abutting properties um, to this are like six that are affected and we've got sufficient buffering and so <coughs> I just want the public to know that there is a um, positive um, recommendation from the demonstrators for this project before we vote any other comments all right we have a motion before us will the clerk please call the roll yes um, Yes. 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 No. Yes. An unashamed no. Okay. Thank you for your time this evening. Thank you. All right. Let's move on. It's seventeen dash forty eight. Amending traffic regulations of the city of Westfield we had a council introduction December 11th and it's up for adoption tonight we'll let the room clear a little bit just give them a chance Jeremy Lawler. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, for the record, uh, Jeremy Lawler, Director of Public Works. Um, before you tonight, this is Ordinance uh, 17-48, amending the traffic regulations of the City of Westfield. Um, the repairs on December 11th, uh, with exception of one typo change on the summary sheet. There were no uh, modifications to the way it was presented. Council have any questions for Jeremy? Very good. Thank you. <laughs> I'd entertain a motion. So moved. Ordinance 1748. Second. Second. Thank you, Joe. Uh, will the clerk please call the roll? Yes. 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 All right. Thank you. And uh, the next item for business, up for business under old business, is Ordinance 17 49, amending park and recreational impact fees. Uh, thank you, sir. Again, Jeremy Lawler, Director of Public Works. Um, before you, 17, Ordinance 17 49, amending the park and rec uh, impact fees. Um, it was introduced to you all on the 11th of December, went to uh, uh, the Ordinance and Zone Improvement Plan, uh, went to APC for public hearing on uh, the 18th of December. Um, it uh, is forwarded back to you uh, with favorable recommendation um, from the APC. Also, no comments at the, at the public hearing. Um, 
So before you tonight for adoption consideration um, as presented uh, during the original presentation. And I, again, offer to answer any questions you might have. All right, thank you. Are there any questions for Jeremy? Hearing none, I entertain a motion. So moved. Okay. Move to second this. Mark Keene. Uh, <laughs> we have a motion by Mark Keene, a second by Bob Horkay. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Any further discussion? All right. Hearing none, uh, will the clerk please call the roll? Yes. 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 Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, next item up on our agenda is Ordinance 1750, the Trails Planned Unit Development District Amendment. Welcome, Dane. Good evening, members of the council. <clears throat> For the record, Dane Crabtree with the Economic and Community Development Department. The item before you is Ordinance 17-50, a proposed amendment to Lot B of the Trails Planned Unit Development, which is located at the hard southeast corner of State Road 32 and Oak Ridge Road. The proposed amendment would modify side yard setback and minimum gross floor area requirements. This item was introduced at the December 11th, 2017 City Council meeting and received a public hearing 2017 where it was forwarded with a unanimous favorable recommendation. This item remains unchanged since its introduction and is available for adoption consideration this evening. Jesse Pullman from On Point Land Matters is present if there are any questions of the council and I'm available if there are any questions of staff. Thank you. Thank you, Dane. Does council have any questions for either Dane or the petitioner? All right, hearing none, I'd entertain a motion. Move to approve ordinance, Move to approve ordinance 1750, the Trails PUD amendment. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Steve Hoover seconds. Any further discussion? All right. Hearing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Yes. 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 All right. Thank you. Moving on to new business. Ordinance 1801, Oak Ridge Point, PUD District Amendment, being presented by Matt Skelton tonight. The council introduction. Thank you, Mr. President. The uh, this item is a it's a an amendment to an existing unit development, the Oak Ridge Point planned unit development. The proposal only pertains to the area highlighted uh, on the exhibit here on the screen, um, and really this just lays the groundwork for a uh, new bank facility, which is uh, planned to be Community First Bank's uh, first location here in Westfield. The uh, this is lot one of the of an existing PUD. It's approximately 1.5 acres uh, in size, and like I said, it just deals with a couple of development standard issues to lay the groundwork for uh, a bank proposal. There's if you want me to go any deeper, you let me know. It's just here for an introduction, and I don't think the petitioner is planning to present. Okay, all right. Any any questions or discussion? I do have a comment. Okay. I noticed um, most of the changes, a lot of them anyway, have to do with um, lowering the landscape standards for the lot. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm not a fan of that. I'd like to know why on earth that is necessary at this point. Noted. And we haven't even begun working through any of those things. This is just the introduction. So I'll, that's noted and we'll, we'll be doing a full analysis of all the requests. But yeah, I saw that too. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? All right, thank you. 
Ordinance 18-02, Compton PUD District. Uh, also, Matt Skelton presenting tonight. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this item is for a, there's a existing dental office on the northwest corner of Spring Mill Road and 156th Street. It's a home that had been converted to a dental office and is operating today. Uh, this uh, PUD proposal before you would rezone the property in order to um, really provide, ad adjust the exist, I think it's there by variance today, and so this would basically be a zoning proposal uh, that contemplates the redevelopment of that corner for a, a new dental office. I, and I, I'm not very familiar with this um, proposal, uh, but it, but I believe it's a complete teardown and rebuild, and I do know the petitioner is here this evening and intends to do a quick presentation. Yep. So please, if you're here. <laughs> Please introduce yourself. I'm sorry. My name is Adam Compton. I'm the dentist at uh, Compton Dental Care, sole owner and uh, sole worker there. I've been there for 20 years. <clears throat> uh, originally, uh, when we applied for the, the zoning, um, it was established as a variance because they noted that they were going to be expanding uh, Spring Mill Road down the road there. Um, this is a picture of the building that we're considering putting in the area. Um, the, um, we, um, uh, I was told that uh, after the, the, they had me put my sign back uh, to where it is today because they knew that the center point was gonna be further back down the road when they got there 10, 15 years later. Uh, so we've been patiently waiting. When they came and we did the negotiations for the, um, uh, oh, as they were uh, uh, appropriating land for the roundabout, uh, we had several discussions. Uh, one of the things that we discussed were um, uh, the placing, the rezoning and placing of this building there. Uh, they, I asked if they would do two things for me. One would be put a cut in on 156th Street to show at their expense, to show that we've had this discussion and that this was something that we, uh, this isn't just something fabricated in my head. Um, and um, also the, um, uh, I asked if they would pay for the permits at that time, and they said, well, you know, Doc, we don't know what the permits are going to be at that time. So the ones that I had listed, they actually gave me that much money more on top of the settlement that we came to uh, as a kind of a, uh, them, their commitment that they understand that I wanted to do a, a um, build on this from, from the beginning, from 20 years ago when we started. So I've just been patiently waiting for the city to get their business done, and it's done now, and so here I am hoping that we can move forward. It's a professional building. Um, uh, the, the goal is to have myself occupy uh, like 52% of the building, and then uh, having maybe two or three professional suites um, that go with it. I have um, one person that uh, my developer's already been in contact with, state farm agent that's ever since I put a building there's like Adam if you ever you know get the opportunity so we're that's what we're looking for professionals I have a chiropractor that is on 32 and I think Hazeldell right now and he's interested in in occupying one of those professional spaces so those are the those are the kind of that's the kind of scenario just normal business we're not looking for 7-elevens or any of that kind of stuff we just I just want to been waiting to expand my practice and um, uh, put a couple of professional suites in the business and questions, please. Have you had any discussions with uh, your neighbors in Crosswind Commons? Uh, I haven't personally, but my project manager and his associate have had conversations with the homeowners association at Crosswind Common that's behind us, um, and they were very positive. We made three appointments with the Spring Mill Improvement Spring Mill Station, Road, task group, whatever, yeah. and all three times they they canceled at the last minute. We were prepared to go in, and something came up. So we've reached out to them, and um, we've you know, uh, I've been to the city twice, once by myself, to um, kind of you know kind of reintroduce myself. Um, I think Matt Pleasant was the first gentleman I spoke to, 
I don't remember who the second one was. We came back. I came back with the the site planning, the picture that you see here, the the the, the color picture of the the design. I want the building to blend in with the community. I'm not looking for a cement office building or anything like that. Um, so I mean, I've been in the community for 20 years, servicing it uh, with for their dental needs. Um, lived in Westfield for 10 years. The only reason I moved five minutes south is because I needed a mother-in-law suite. So we found a home just over the border. Uh, and that's the only reason why we moved out of Westfield, is to accommodate that. But uh, so I've been part of this community for a long time and been kind of waiting my turn, so to speak, to you know, let the city get their business done. So here I am. I mean, I, I believe it's, a, as shown, a very attractive building, and I commend you for starting at that point. I think the key will be, I mean, we will obviously have a public hearing at the APC, uh, get any concerns from neighbors at that point, and you'll probably be requested to have a neighborhood meeting. I'm sure staff has told you that, but other than that, I mean, I think it's a good uh, a good use. Certainly, a much more attractive building than your than your current yes reused home there. But I think that's pretty much what the homeowners association was, you know, most pleased about is that it's going to improve and lift up the the property in general. So, thank you. Any other questions? I don't have a problem with moving this on to APC, but quite candidly, I have never liked the BZA approval that you received. I just thought that was a wrong decision to start commercializing that corner spring mill. I think the building you're proposing is quite nice, but I am bothered by the fact that it allows everything that's within the local business zoning, not limiting it to the types of uses you've just described. So as of right now, I think it needs some work in that regard to, to come back before I would be interested in proceeding with it. Sure, right now. Well, and that's that one of the things of I, I've been to the, uh, visited the city many times over the last 20 years, uh, kind of checking in, making sure that, you know, are, how are things going along, when can I, you know, whatever. There was a very nice lady that was in the basement here 10 years ago, I think, 15 years ago maybe even, that said, we, we know. Prefer, we prefer lower level. <laughs> oh, the, the garden level suite. That, uh, you know, I had said, you know, with the developments that are coming, this really needs, we want to clean this up for you. If you'll be patient with us and you'll work with us once we're, you know, doing comparables and appropriations, and that's where we went through, I mean, I, I realized that the negotiations that I had with them at the time when, when we were talking about that, it wasn't anything that commits you people to anything, but it was something, that's why I had asked them to do something so that there was some legitimacy to the, uh, that there were discussions and that there were reasonable considerations that were being lent to me. The cut in on 156th Street is, I mean, there's no reason for them to put that there if we hadn't had a discussion of that, that type. Any other comments? I want to thank you, Dr. Com. Thank you. All right. Uh, that brings us to the last item under new business resolution 18100 and this is just a, a, a counselor induction and a discussion um, just as background um, Main Street Productions has a theater out on 32 and they are they have uh, are considering with the city's help to relocate their uh, production playhouse downtown or theater and with the city's help um, my question to council members is is this something you would entertain is this use acceptable um, we have a location that is on city property right uh, right on um, North Union between the alley and the church house coming in off North Union I spoke to most of you about that and um, uh, do you feel that this is a uh, location for for that to start the discussion is this acceptable I was not able to open the license agreement today well, until just now but so obviously I haven't read that but <coughs> Just, uh, I mean, in principle, I agree this could be a very good use 
for our downtown and uh, we obviously need yeah some more time to review it but right. in principle I think it's a great idea it'll bring uh, our some culture downtown perhaps uh, and once we get those visitors down here they'll spend money at our other establishments and, and help revitalize our downtown so I think it's a great great use all right. I'll I'll ask you, Jim, move to approve resolution 18100. So let's. It's up for vote tonight. Well, we're, we're really, we have to work out the licensing agreement with them. But in concept. Uh, resolution just, authorizes you to do that, though. Isn't that what it says? It, it does. It does, yeah. It does yes. within certain parameters, I think, what yeah, Jim. So, that's, so let's approve the resolution and you work out the details. That, I mean, that seems to me what was you're asking. that way, yes. Okay. Is council prepared to do that? I made a motion. No, I, I just wondered if you need a second. I mean, we oh, you made the motion. This is just to delve further. I mean, let, let's get this straight. I'm confused. Okay. All right. So we have a motion. Is there a second? Second. All right. We have a motion. Is second. Further discussion. In principle, I mean, I'm okay with with investigating this further. It's we don't have a whole lot of information right now. We don't have a concept plan. We we don't have timelines that none of the specifics. So my question is: Is this resolution committing us to doing anything? I don't see the actual. It, it, it's a resolution to approve the agreement but we don't actually have the full agreement. That's where I'm confused. Correct. Yeah. The, the, the resolution authorizes the council, or the council will authorize the president of the council to execute it when those details are worked out. We don't have those details. But if you uh, look at the agreement, there are a couple of moving parts. One is the type of building and the architectural design. That's not done. Uh, it has to be approved by the city, but you may want to see that spelled out within the resolution and the agreement. The other thing that's a moving part is the uh, period of time. Uh, this isn't a lease. It's a license, so they're there with our permission. They're going to be doing improvements to it. There may be some question as to how much of the improvements stay with the land if they vacate it or ask to be vacated. So th there, there are some moving parts. I think it was introduced tonight to see if the land use was appropriate, was comfortable with that. If the council's comfortable with authorizing the council president to sign it once it's in a form that the staff and, and uh, Jim feels is comfortable, you can do that tonight. If you'd like to wait until we have more of the, uh, the hard things worked out and can attach it, we can do that as well. But right now you have a motion and a second. Right. Well, I, I certainly support moving forward with this, but I would like to see additional information. Uh, I've not seen any renderings as to what this building might look like. Uh, is that information that we would have by our next meeting? I mean, will we have will, will we have some idea of what is being proposed here? In speaking to the uh, contact person with the Playhouse, they had a meeting yesterday in which this was discussed, and I know there are some ideas going back and forth, but I've not been privy to them. So uh, next meeting might be a little quick, maybe not. I, I don't know. I think let, let me add, uh, put on the agenda. I'm not really looking for uh, approvals or this or that. You give the administration approval to enter into leases all the time. I really want to know, do you like the concept of putting a playhouse theater on this property out here? That's all I'm looking for tonight. No details right now, just do I tell them to go away or do we entertain what they want to do? Is that a good location? So, so so would you consider withdrawing your motion at this time? Oh, well, yeah. Well, I mean, if we're going to present it as it's listed there as go back to it now, maybe approve the license agreement. If this was just asked for our opinion on it, that that's something different. I'm, I'm certainly I, I withdraw my motion. 
I'm certainly in favor of that use for that property. I think a playhouse downtown is wonderful and would be a, a community asset. I had confidence that you would negotiate a good agreement and wouldn't sign it until you came back to us. But however we want to do it procedurally. Okay. So I think I think uh, I'd like to hear from the other counselors on the I'd concept. Su I'd support it, but I think we can wait till we vote on anything, till we see what's going to look like. And it's got to be zoned. Uh, it's got to be. I just want to know: Are you us proposing on this property? Go. It's consistent with our sub area plan for the downtown. I mean, that's one of the first questions to really ask yourself. All we're asking is for a yes to that question. I support the use of the location as long as the Playhouse people agree they can put a satisfactory building there and there's enough parking. So yeah. Yeah. let's bring the arts downtown so you can have a dinner and a play. <laughs> All right. All right. That and uh, that concludes tonight's business. Uh, at this time, guests who would like to address council on items not on the agenda may do so at this time. Then we'll move on to council, uh, city <coughs> council comments. I can uh, give an update on uh, APC. Oh, all right, well. Do you want to go first? Though? I'll go, since <laughs> I've already started. Uh, update from the January 2nd uh, Advisory Plan Commission meeting. The uh, a development plan for the self-storage uh, on um, just off of Oak Ridge Road was approved. Uh, we had a public hearing for the development plan and site plan for Sunbelt Rentals, uh, 109th Street. We had uh, a PUD uh, Spring Mill Station. Uh, PUD that got a favorable recommendation and we had uh, two oh, had the Westchester PUD uh, received a negative recommendation that was discussed earlier this evening and the uh, GPAC PUD amendment received a favorable recommendation uh, and that was the extent of our meeting thank you Steve Cindy, you had some comments. It's, it's quite exciting. You know, we deal with the Boy Scouts a lot in their projects that they do for the city, and they really enhance those with their Eagle Scout projects. We actually have a Girl Scout who is going for her gold, and that, that's a big deal. It's a lot like the Eagle Scout project. So um, her name is Hannah Semler, and she has asked me to, to be her advisor for her project to locate a blessings box in our city, which is much like the lend, the little lending library, the boxes that you put out and you know, when someone has a book, they put it in and someone else can take it and keeps moving on like that. And so her idea is to have this blessings box and she's going to need um, obviously materials to construct and, and some other things to go along with that and is looking for support. Um, but also from this council is looking for assistance in where to locate one in our city and she's thinking that a near a church would be um, a good location but also we have our city properties too so I thought I'd put that all out there for you guys to think on and and maybe to see with with the powers that be in those decisions that we could find a location to help Hannah put up her blessing box it's it's gold um, I don't have it in front of me right now, but she's done her bronze and silver, and this is the final step. Huh? Like an eagle scout. Exactly. Yeah. It's kind of a rarity these days, so I was really excited to hear. So. And what is a blessing box? And I, I can forward you all a picture, okay. but it, it, it looks a lot like one of the ones for the lending library. Okay. Except it would have... Uh, personal hygiene items, food, and other things like that in there instead of books. Ah, okay. If that helps to. Absolutely. Yeah, the council comments. All right. Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you. Uh, Matt, I noticed you had to step forward for a couple of years. How many people of yours are sick? 
only one. The rest of them are getting really smart. Yeah, they're, yeah, yeah. they're sick. So Monday is to go through two-day health classes. We need them. Uh, President Ake and Mr. Lehman, congratulations on your new elections. We look forward to Thank you, sir. serving with you in, a, in another year. Uh, we just, uh, I was just told uh, by our uh, public works and, and uh, parks people that, you know, we're re they are redeveloping the south end playground of Asa Bales. And somebody came up with a great idea, and I don't know who it was. Chris McConnell worked with our uh, uh, middle school uh, volunteer group. Here we go again, student group. Uh, he went to them and said, hey, guys, what do you want to have in this park? And he helped, they helped him design it. And it's going to be ready to go uh, next spring, I guess. Is that right, Jeremy? Sure. All right, good. Good collaboration. like that. Um, weather has certainly been uh, a topic not only here but across the country. I don't remember such a long cold spell. Uh, I really want to thank uh, our public safety people uh, for uh, police and fire for getting us through that period. Um, gosh, I don't think we had any really bad incidents, and they hate me to say that. Uh, Jeremy, your people performed on our streets very well, and you know I do take a look at that. Bad Year's Day, but um, when I got a call that Jeremy was coming through my neighborhood, I knew all hands were on deck, so you guys uh, did a great job, and I know the, uh, uh, the police and the fire that, that watched over us on uh, Christmas, Christmas Eve, New Year's Day. They have to do it every year, but uh, gosh, we don't ever give them enough thanks uh, for that. Um, this past uh, Saturday, we had the pleasure of joining uh, out at uh, Grand Park at the uh, Pacers athletic facility as the basketball house is is now known out there um, to celebrate their coming to Grand Park and you know I just happen to think we we now have uh, really a trivecta of professional sports out there we have the uh, Indy 11 has been there for a number of years practicing their facilities uh, we have the Indianapolis Colts of course coming and now we've we've added the Pacers, and it was great, good publicity. Fox Sports was broadcasting a game live out there in the afternoon. Uh, it was just a, a, a great day in the middle of winter celebrating Indiana's, uh, Indiana's sports. So that was, uh, that was great. We have uh, a state of the city talk. For those of you that want to be bored, you can come listen to us talk. We're going to talk about the 10 years because it has now been 10 years uh, since we've had a mayor and a city council, believe it or not. So it's, uh, uh, that's, doesn't seem like it. Um, usually I don't comment on the uh, results that we just went through, and although it was a little heated at times, I, 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 I really want to thank uh, our council members, I want to thank the representatives from the southwest side, Dr. Venetta, Kristen Burkhardt, Susie Dubois, Danielle Tolan, I think you stepped forward, represented that area with our people. Uh, it was just um, a great example of our public working with our council to uh, alleviate an issue. And we've used this concept over and over again at Spring Mill, Grand Junction, Grand Park. And uh, I, want, I want to thank you all for, for stepping up and representing your areas. And hopefully we've reached a, an agreement in an area that has been uh, uh, seen some controversy over the last year. So thank you all for your, for your involvement. I very much appreciate it. Council. All right, thank you. And I'd like to comment, too, um, I think our APC did a fine job and what they did in and uh, the vote was six to three to deny that um, but that started the wheels turning a little bit started a discussion and started people talking to each other and trying to find a win-win situ situation 
uh, for everybody concerned. I do feel that uh, they contributed to starting that discussion. Uh, and it just reminds me of the other people that have served uh, voluntarily on the Spring Mill Station Group, uh, the Downtown Association, and a lot of these projects that come forward, uh, the public has held, uh, has, has contributed in many ways to make our city just come together and solve problems. And I really appreciate the fact that um, the APC found some things that they thought maybe in the long run could be better. Um, and I think we're all better for coming through that. I think it brings certainty to the area. It guarantees uh, that there is a solution out there. And um, I just think it's a wonderful thing for the golfing community, for the residents out there, and uh, for Westfield in general. So I just wanted to recognize the APC and I think they did, uh, did, uh, I just want to thank them. So that's my final comment. At this time, the chair would uh, call for adjournment. Is there a motion? Summer. Second. Sure. All those in favor adjourn, adjournment signify by saying aye. 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 We stand adjourned, thank you. And happy new year to everybody.